Let's start off with a simple command, get wmyobject. object. Let's retrieve the win32 operating system class from a remote computer named server-r2. Okay, that command worked. It did pretty much what I wanted it to. Not getting exactly the output I wanted, so let's hit up arrow. Let's pipe that to select object. I'd like some different properties here. Uh, I do want the build number still, and I'd also like a caption to describe what version of Windows I'm using, and I'd like to see the service pack major version property. Okay, that's about what I wanted. Now, I'd like to give this command to other people in my environment who can use it, and I really only want them to have to change the computer name. Uh, I want that to work exactly as it is every single time, so let's take this into a script file. And I've copied that from the to the clipboard, and I'm just going to paste it now. I'll need to clean up to get rid of the prompt and bring all that together into a single command line. Bump the font size a little, make it more readable. So I do have one thing in here that I think is going to change on a regular basis, and that, as I said, is the computer name. So let's just stick a variable in there. And here at the top of the script, we'll set computer name equal to server-r2. Now at this point, I can save this. I'll just save it in the root of the directory to make it a little easier here, and we'll call it get-osinfo.ps1. You'll notice that I've given it a commandlet-style name with the verb get followed by a hyphen and then the OS info as the noun. So it looks kind of like a commandlet. At this point, if somebody wanted to run this, they would still need to open it, edit it, and change this computer name to whatever computer name they needed to query at the time. That's got a couple problems with it. For one, it's a little inconvenient for them to have to do that. And for two, it, it opens up the possibility that they're going to accidentally edit something that I didn't want them to change. So instead of having this be just a, a naked variable, let's enclose it in a parameter block or param block. Now, rather than defining this as a variable, I've defined it as an input parameter to this script. And because I'm assigning it a value, I've actually given it a default. So if somebody tries to run this script without specifying the parameter, then it'll use this default value. Server R2 is probably not a good default value, so let's change it to localhost. Now, another thing you could choose to do is actually make this uh, an, an executable statement. I could say, I want my default value to be read host, enter a computer name. And that way, if somebody runs the script without providing this parameter, uh, then they'll be prompted to provide it. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it as localhost. I'll save this. And just to prove it works, let's go down here to the command line and get a directory. So uh, there's my get os info dash dot ps1. So let's actually run that. Get os info. And because I didn't provide a computer name, it accepted the default of localhost. So to provide the computer name, because in the script I actually named the variable computer name, then the parameter is dash computer name. So I can say server dash r2. And just like with most PowerShell parameters, I can abbreviate that. Uh, because I only have one parameter, dash C is enough for PowerShell to figure out what parameter I need. In fact, because that's the first parameter I've declared, I don't even need to provide the parameter name. PowerShell will accept it as a positional parameter. So this gets you on a good start to taking commands, even really complex multi-command pipelines, parameterizing them, and then providing them as reusable tools to other folks in your environment.